大家好，欢迎来到创生科技嘉年华二零二二的网上讲座。那我们今天很高兴邀请到财阳教授。那财阳教授呢，是香港理工大学应用物理学系的教授，以及是理学院的副院长，还有是香港青年科学院院士。那很高兴邀请到他今天来为我们讲讲解一个题目，就是仿生视觉传感器。那在听讲座的过程当过程当中呢，那如果呃观众有问题想向财教授提问的话，你们就可以用文字写给我们。你们可以在 Zoom 里面的呃 Q&A 的位置提交你们的问啊提问。那如果在 YouTube 上看直播的朋友呢，也可以在页面下方的呃信息箱留言。有机会的话，我们会在最后的五到十分钟的问答环节向啊财教授提问这个问题的。那相信大家也很想要快点了解这个题目的相关内容，那就有请财教授为我们分享啦。OK， 呃、uh, ，Can you see my PPT file? Can you see my? Yes. 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 OK. 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 呃、uh, ，Thanks very much for Maddie's、uh, kind introduction. Uh, it's really my great pleasure to attend this uh, Inno Carnival 2022. Uh, this is Yang Cai from uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Today, I'm going to share our latest uh, research studies. The title of my talk is uh, Bow Inspired Vision Sensor. First, uh, let me give a very quick uh, introduction to the background of uh, this uh, research work. Our human has five senses including a uh, sight, taste, touch, smell, and uh, sound. But the most important uh, sensory organ uh, is our human eye. That is because the vision is the dominant uh, resource for our human to collect information from an external world. Actually, uh, over 80% information uh, we collect from our vision system and around 10 percentage uh, information are from our ear. And more importantly, in our human brain, almost half of the resources are used to process the uh, vision information. Today, uh, every people is using electronic product very frequently. In this uh, electronic product, uh, including uh, iPhone, uh, iPad, uh, there are a lot of uh, images and videos. In the physical world, we collect uh, images and videos from uh, our human eye. But in the electronic world, we, we collect uh, the image and video from uh, camera. So, uh, so here, uh, uh, I, I'm sitting in my office, but you can still uh, see my face because uh, uh, my computer has a camera. So my camera take an image and upload it to the internet. So the camera uh, consists of many, many uh, image sensors. Are you satisfied uh, with the existing uh, camera? Pro probably not. Uh, for example, uh, when you use your smartphone to take a video or take some uh, images, uh, when, you, when you use it for a few minutes, uh, you will uh, feel the uh, temperature is higher than high. It's very hot because part of the reason is uh, uh, the image sensor has a very high, high power consumption. So it generates a lot of uh, heat. So uh, the temperature is very high. Uh, for another example, uh, if you use your camera to take an uh, uh, image in dark or under very bright lighting conditions, the image quality is uh, typically very bad. You, you cannot see the image or video very clear. So that means the, the existing camera has a very narrow dynamic range. Actually, it's only around 60 dB. Uh, for another example, so uh, if you use your camera to take a, a video for motion, if the motion is very quickly, uh, the video is also not very clear. 
uh, sometimes it uh, display a uh, blur. So this is uh, not very good. So uh, uh, for the biological uh, vision system, actually uh, its power consumption is much, much lower than uh, existing uh, camera. And also uh, in biological vision system, they have a, a lot of new functionality. They, they can see image, uh, even it's very dark. Uh, they can also uh, capture very uh, quick motion. So uh, in this part, uh, I will introduce different biological vision system, including uh, human eye, uh, insect eye, amphibian eye. So this uh, biological vision system, they have a different working mechanism from the image sensor, and they also have some new functionality. So we learn this uh, uh, working mechanism of this biological vision system. So we redesign the image sensor. We try to uh, extend this uh, mechanism to the uh, new image sensor. We call it a uh, Boeing spider vision sensor. We hope it's uh, uh, power consumption is lower, and we also hope it has uh, more functionality and uh, even more intelligent. Okay, so uh, let's start the first part. Let me introduce what is the uh, uh, conventional uh, image sensors. So most of uh, people are using a uh, camera uh, from a uh, consumable electronics uh, like smartphone or camera. Uh, but uh, uh, this camera can be also used in a different application scenario. For example, uh, drive these vehicles, uh, robotics, and even industry uh, manufacturing. So, so this uh, percentage actually uh, increase uh, more and more. Uh, it can change uh, our daily life dramatically. So uh, for human people, when we see an image, we, we, we can see the image, we, we perceive the image, it looks like this. But for the image sensor, uh, they are electronic uh, product. So when they uh, capture the information from external world, they are just uh, get uh, uh, wanted, electrical wanted or electrical current. So they are numeric values. So when you use your camera, you can only collect the, the these uh, uh, values. This value could be a voltage, could be a current. But how to uh, convert these values into an image? So we have to use the image processing unit. So this image processing unit is very similar to the uh, CPU, uh, central processing unit. So actually in camera, we have two parts. One part is the image sensor. The other part is the image processing unit. For the image sensor, uh, it can convert the light into uh, electricity. Uh, so this electricity signal could be voltage, could be current, but it, it's uh, still not an image. If we want to reconstruct uh, this uh, uh, physical value into uh, our image, we have to use the image processing unit. So uh, we have to use the different uh, algorithm to uh, recognize, to reorganize, and uh, reconstruct. Then we can uh, get, get the uh, uh, final images. So uh, keep in your mind, from the camera, we, we have two parts. Two, two different units. One is the image sensor. It convert light into uh, electronic signal. At the image processing unit, it can process this uh, numeric value and uh, reconstruct it into an uh, image. Okay, so how to, uh, uh, I'm a hardware people. So uh, from hardware people, uh, we are interested in how to fabricate this uh, uh, image sensor and image processing unit. Uh, actually, uh, in your smartphone, uh, you, you, you have camera. So this camera actually are made with uh, uh, silicon uh, complementary metal oxide semiconductor technology. So uh, this is a photo 
this is a photo of uh, uh, silicon CMOS sensors. Uh, actually, when, when, when you uh, open your uh, uh, along with an electronic product, you, you will find uh, these are uh, made with uh, some chips. We, we call it electronic chips. It could be sensor, it could be uh, a, a processing unit. The material actually is the silicon. Uh, so how, how do we use the silicon to fabricate this uh, uh, electronic chip? So here you can see, uh, this is a typical uh, silicon wafer. Its thickness is very thin. It's just uh, around uh, 500 micrometers. So uh, you can see uh, in this silicon wafer, there are many, many uh, square die. So each die actually could be uh, one chip. So one wafer, it consists a lot of uh, dye. So we, we can cut this uh, uh, wafer into different electronic chip. And then we do the packaging uh, and uh, form the uh, electronic system. Originally, uh, in the history uh, of the, uh, uh, the silicon CMOS technology, the wafer size is very small. Uh, uh, at the very beginning, it's just uh, a two inch wafer, uh, later it's a four inch, uh, eight inch, right now it's already 16 inch. So why we need a, a large silicon wafer to, to do the fabrication? Uh, because of when we fabricated the electronic chip on the, this silicon wafer, there are many, many steps, over 1,000 steps. So this, uh, this uh, uh, micro fabrication, uh, processing step are very cost. So if we can fabricate many, many chips together uh, in one wafer, the cost will be uh, significantly reduced. So we uh, so uh, we, we hope to get use a larger and a larger silicon wafer. Okay, this is a, a cross-sectional uh, SEM image of uh, uh, electronic chip. Uh, silicon wafer is here. Silicon wafer is uh, at the bottom. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, there are many, many layers. It, it, it could be the semiconductor, it could be metal and the insulator, uh, just uh, like a uh, very tall building uh, uh, over these uh, uh, very small wafers. Uh, actually, uh, at the bottom, uh, we have a silicon transistor. The size is very, very small. It's just uh, today you 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 should hear uh, some uh, technology node. It's uh, uh, seven nanometer, five nanometer, three nanometer. That means the size of the silicon transistor. In the early history, the size is very, very large. Uh, but uh, today uh, we are using integrated circuit. The density is very high. Uh, in, in your smartphone, there are billions of uh, silicon transistors. So we in, we interconnect this uh, uh, silicon transistor together, and we form an integrated circuit. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, electronic chip can realize many many functions. So why we uh, like a, a smaller and a smaller te technology node? Uh, because uh, at the very beginning. Uh, the feature size of a silicon transistor is uh, very, uh, very large. Uh, so the speed is not very uh, high. The integration density is also not very high. But if you want to get a high performance, uh, more functionality, we have to use more and more transistor. So we try to reduce the uh, feature size of the silicon transistor. Uh, some students probably hear uh, more slow. So Moore's law actually describes the trend uh, of the uh, silicon CMOS technology. Uh, it states every uh, 18 months, uh, the size of the uh, transistor will be reduced by half. And uh, every 18 months, the price of the silicon transistor will reduced by half. So first law and the second law. Okay, let's go back to the uh, camera uh, uh, at the image sensor. 
So uh, with the city consumers technology, actually we can uh, fabricate many, many type of uh, electronic chip. Camera or image sensor, they are just one type of the uh, electronic chip. Uh, from the camera, there are two major type of sensors. One is a CCD, uh, charge coupled uh, device. The other is a, a CMOS. So, uh, so from these two uh, kind of devices, their uh, device structure is different uh, as their readout scheme is also uh, different. So let me first introduce uh, the CCD. Uh, this is a cross-sectional uh, cross schematic of the CCD device. Uh, basically, uh, it consists of a three-layer structure. Uh, the top layer is a, a metal, and the intermediate layer is the oxide, and the bottom layer is the semiconductor. So when the light goes inside, it will introduce some charge uh, on the, uh, in, in the semiconductor. So if the light intensity is higher, uh, the density of the charge will be higher. So uh, CCD image sensors are current drive device. The charge is connected in uh, each pixel. Uh, its field factor is uh, uh, very high. Therefore, uh, CCD has a very high uh, photosensitivity. The second type of uh, uh, image sensor is the CMOS uh, image sensor. So uh, in your smartphone, actually the camera is made with this uh, CMOS image sensor uh, because uh, its cost is uh, much, much uh, low. Uh, from the uh, device structure, uh, it's very simple. It's just a, a pin diode. It's a pin diode. Uh, if you uh, know some basic knowledge of the semiconductor, uh, from the uh, semiconductor, it has two types. One is the P-type and the other is the N-type. So this uh, two semiconductor combined together, uh, it will form a, a building electrical field. Uh, when the light goes inside, it will generate uh, electron and hole pair. This building electrical field will uh, dissociate uh, this uh, electron hole pair and form the current. So uh, to read out the uh, this electrical current, we have to use some uh, 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 additional circuit to, to read the current. So, uh, so uh, the, uh, it's a fail factor actually is uh, not very high. So the sensitivity of CMOS image sensor is uh, not as good as the uh, CCD. Uh, from the CMOS image sensor, they are wanted to drive device. Uh, the, when the light, under the light stimulation, it will create a wanted potential uh, proportional to the light intensity. Uh, but uh, its cost is uh, relatively cheap. So today in most of the camera, uh, we are using this uh, uh, CMOS image sensors. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, Today's image sensor actually uh, have some uh, uh, problem. For example, uh, the power consumption is very high. Uh, so when you use a battery, uh, it will consume the electricity very quickly. And also its dynamic range is uh, relatively low. Uh, if the light intensity is too strong, if the light intensity is too weak, uh, you cannot get the good image. Uh, and when you use the image sensor to, to take a video, uh, there is a, a frame rate. If the frame rate is uh, too high, uh, actually you get a lot of data useless. Uh, and uh, if the frame rate is uh, not high, uh, the, uh, the video will be uh, not clear. Uh, this is from the uh, sensor part. Uh, but uh, we also need to uh, Sensor part, it just uh, converts the uh, light into uh, electronic signal. This is the uh, optical electronic process. But uh, when we get this uh, electrical counter or in electrical voltage, we have to do the processing. We need to use the uh, image process unit. 
So uh, from the image sensor uh, and image processing unit, uh, they are two different uh, hardware. They are separately in physical space. So the data the, has to be transferred between the image sensor and the uh, uh, image processing unit. Uh, if the data are few, it doesn't matter. But if data uh, a lot, uh, the data conversion and the transfer will cause a lot of uh, energy consumption at the time delay. And also uh, in the physical world, actually the uh, light intensity is analog. But when we use the uh, image processing unit, typically they are digital. So we have to do the analog to digital conversion and the digital to analog conversion. So this conversion process uh, for the cause of power consumption at a time delay. So do we know what is the analog and what is the digital? So analog actually is the, that means the continu continuous uh, signal. Uh, so that means that you, you can change from a one, one point one, one point two, one point three, uh, at the two, two point one, two point two, two point three. But for the digital, uh, they are just, you only have two values. One is zero, the other is one. Uh, they are, the value are discreted. So, uh, so, but from the uh, computing, we like the digital because it, it is more efficient, it's more accurate. Okay, uh, this is my first part. Uh, I introduced the uh, conventional image sensors. Uh, so from this introduction, you, you can see uh, uh, the image sensor actually met with the uh, silicon CMOS processing technology, but they have uh, some uh, disadvantage. So if we are going to uh, improve uh, its performance and uh, functionality, uh, we are going to uh, learn from a uh, uh, biological vision system. So for example, uh, this is a schematic of a uh, human vision system. From human vision system, uh, we have uh, a human eye. So uh, light go inside human eye. We have a photoreceptor. Uh, uh, we have a retina. Retina actually, it consists of uh, uh, three layer. Uh, we, we have a uh, root and co-cell, uh, they are photoreceptor. Uh, and we also have a, a horizontal cell. And we also have a gadolin cell. So uh, this, uh, uh, Cells actually have a lot of uh, uh, functionality. For example, root cell it can respond uh, to a uh, weak light. Co cell can respond to the uh, strong light. Uh, and uh, when they can convert the light information into electrostimulation and then pass to the horizontal cell and gadolin cell. So only you can trigger the gadolin cell. Gadolin cell will send the information through optical nerve to human brain. So in the human brain, we have a visual uh, context. So this part, we specially uh, process the uh, vision information. So uh, the retina actually is very complex. Uh, it can uh, uh, pass useful information into human brain. And the useless information will be filtered. Uh, another uh, very interesting for functionality of the human eye is uh, it can do the adaptation. So for example, when you go to a cinema, uh, outside it's very bright, but when you go inside, it's very dark. At the very beginning, you cannot see anything because the environment is too dark. But the human eye can do the adaptation. But when you stay in this dark room for a few minutes, you can gradually see the environment more clearly. So th this is the uh, adaptation process. Uh, similarly, when you go outside from the cinema, uh, uh, it, uh, outside is very bright. At the very beginning, you, it's, uh, uh, you can also not uh, see very clearly, but after adaptation, uh, you, you can, uh, for a few minutes, you can also see the image more clearly. Later, I will show you an example. Uh, another example is a, a vision system of uh, amphibia. So amphibia, uh, 
at a different stage, they, they live in different uh, uh, environment. So uh, in the early stages, they can live in the uh, underwater. Uh, and uh, after it grows, it, it can live in land. Uh, underwater, uh, there are uh, the light intensity, visible light intensity is very dim. So uh, how to uh, see uh, the external environment? Uh, the by uh, amphibia has to, to detect the infrared light. Uh, so at the very beginning, uh, in its uh, early stage, uh, their vision system can uh, manually detect uh, infrared light. But after they grew, they uh, they live in the lab. Uh, they can see visible light, so their visual system can. Uh, uh, gradually change to response to the uh, visible light, uh, blue, green, and uh, red. Uh, so in their early stage, they really respond to the uh, infrared light. So that is the uh, amphibia uh, vision system. Uh, and also snake. Snake, uh, it has very poor eyesight. It has two eyes, but its eyesight is very poor. Uh, it cannot see uh, very clearly uh, through the, its eye. But uh, some snakes, uh, it has a sensory organ. It is so-called uh, pit organs. So this pit organ, it can detect infrared radiation from warm body. For example, uh, uh, our human person, the normal temperature is uh, uh, 36 degrees. So uh, if it's warm, it will emit infrared light. So uh, some snake can use their uh, pit organs to detect uh, uh, infrared uh, radiation. So they can still uh, uh, see something uh, uh, by complementary with their uh, 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 snake eye, so they can still detect the uh, environment. And also insect eye. So uh, insect, uh, uh, especially from the flying insect, uh, it always flies uh, in the environment, uh, but their uh, eye actually is uh, much, much smaller than human. Uh, its structure is very different from a uh, human eye. Human eye actually it only has a single lens, but from the uh, insect eye it has many many lens. So each lens uh, is uh, connected to to some photoreceptors. So uh, uh, from the insect uh, it it can see uh, uh, with a very wide uh, field of view, but for our human person actually the angle is very very narrow. Uh, but from the insect, uh, its view angle is very uh, wide. Uh, also, uh, insect uh, eye is very sensitive to the motion. Uh, for example, uh, when we use a uh, uh, sweater, when we sweater the uh, 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 fly, uh, although we, our speed is very uh, fast, sometimes we cannot uh, uh, sweat the uh, fly uh, because uh, from the fly uh, uh, it can detect the motion uh, much much quicker than human. Uh, in human eye, uh, in insect eye, their distance between the eye and brain is very very short. So it uh, only uh, uh, its speed is a uh, four time uh, higher than a human eye. So when we just start to move. Uh, the fly will, uh, will perceive the motion and then uh, it can uh, escape. So uh, uh, insect eye is very sensitive to, to the motion. So uh, just now I introduced uh, uh, different uh, biological vision system, including uh, human, uh, amphibia, a snake, uh, and uh, insect. So uh, after we learn their uh, working mechanism, we try to improve the uh, 
image sensor. So actually, uh, this research area uh, starts very early. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, Professor Kevin Media uh, in California Institute of Technology, uh, they already started to uh, develop the so-called silicon retina. So silicon is the most uh, important material uh, in the intergrid circuit. So, uh, so Professor Kevin Media uh, designed a different electronic circuit to mimic uh, the functionality of the uh, retina. Uh, and also in Japan, uh, uh, some researchers also uh, use a different material system, gamma S9, uh, to mimic the function of the uh, artificial retina. And more recently, uh, this uh, design already have some uh, uh, commercial product, for example, uh, one of the product is the uh, so-called dynamic uh, vision size uh, DVS. So this DVS uh, it emulates the function of the human eye. Uh, it can detect uh, the motion um, more efficiently. Uh, if uh, only one pixel, uh, its light intensity is changed, then it will record uh, the background information will be filled. So uh, a lot of redundant information will be filled through this DVS. Uh, but for the DVS, it can only detect the motion. It cannot detect the static uh, image. Uh, so it, it loses some uh, important information. Uh, later, people combined with the DV, uh, combined uh, with the DV as a commercial uh, conventional image sensor. So uh, it can use a clock to control. So uh, when the when the motion uh, is uh, recorded with DVS, the stack image is also recorded, and then they combine together. It, it can get, get more efficient information. Uh, but uh, it also loses some information. Uh, so later people uh, design another uh, so-called uh, Davis dynamic and active pixel vision sensors. So it will actually combine with the conventional uh, EPS and the DVS. So from the conventional EPS, it always detects the static image, but from the DVS, it only detects the uh, motion. So when they combine together, they can see the motion uh, more clearly and also see the background uh, information. But you can see the circuit is very complex the power consumption is also very high. Uh, so uh, it's uh, not very uh, efficient. Uh, here uh, I list a table, uh, compare this uh, three conventional uh, neuromorphic vision sensor, the DVS, ATIS, Davis. Uh, typically their circuit is uh, much, much uh, complex compared with the CCD and the APS. And also uh, the area of each pixel is much larger. So the field factor is low. Uh, if the field factor is low, the sensitivity will be low. Uh, if the sensitivity is low, the signal to noise ratio will be uh, not good. So uh, the existing uh, new, new romophobic vision sensors are also not uh, very uh, satisfying. So uh, in our research team, uh, we are trying to develop some uh, new uh, bio-inspired vision sensors. So in the, this part, uh, it will be about my uh, my research works. Okay, uh, still let me give a, a very quick uh, introduction. So why we uh, uh, study this uh, uh, bio-inspired uh, vision sensor? So uh, in the physical world, uh, there are a lot of information. Uh, every second, uh, it will generate uh, 10 to 34 bits. Uh, today, we are developing an uh, Internet of Things. In the Internet of Things, there are also a lot of electronic sensors. Uh, by 2032, there, there will be 45 trillion sensors. So this sensor will generate uh, uh, more data. Every second, it will generate uh, 10 to 20 bits. So here you can see there is a huge gap. For the human 
person, its sensory capability actually it doesn't increase in the past thousand years, but in the physical world, uh, the uh, information increases uh, dramatically. That means uh, our human person loses a lot of uh, information, but uh, we can still survive in the environment. So what's the reason? Because uh, our human uh, sensory organ are not only uh, sensor, but also uh, it also has the computing functions. So, for example, uh, uh, when the vision information go inside the human eye, uh, our human eye will not uh, pass all of the information into human brain. Our uh, human eye actually uh, do some pre-processing. Uh, we only choose some useful information go inside the human brain. This uh, uh, data compressed ratio is pretty high. It's uh, 10 to 5 over 1. That means that if uh, you have a 10 to 5 bit information going inside the human eye and only one bit information going go through the human brain. So that means uh, uh, human eye can do very efficient pre-processing uh, to select the uh, useful information. Uh, as I said early, uh, conventional uh, uh, sensory computing architecture actually uh, it can consist of sensor, it consists of a processing unit. Uh, sensor is sensor, processing unit is a processing unit. The, the, they are uh, physically uh, separated. We have to use some interconnect to uh, to connect together, and also uh, we have to do the data conversion, uh, analog to digital, and we also need to use memory to store this information. Uh, so this parallel diagram works very well uh, in the past days uh, because the sensor uh, it only generates a few data. But today uh, we have more and more uh, data, especially from the image sensor. The resolution is higher and high. The frame rate is also higher and higher. So it generates a lot, huge amount of uh, data uh, at the image sensor. So this sensor has to be transferred and convert. Uh, uh, so it causes a lot of energy consumption uh, at the time delay. To solve this problem, we are going to uh, develop some uh, new computing per diagram. So in our research team, we propose a near sensor and in sensor computing. Uh, with this new computing per diagram, we are going to shift part of the computing task more close to the accessory terminal. We call it near sensor and in sensor computing. So what is near sensor computing? Near sensor computing, uh, we try to uh, minimize the distance between the sensor and the computing unit. Uh, in the uh, early stage, uh, these two units actually had a very long distance very long distance. Uh, right now, we can use some uh, microfabrication technology. Uh, we can use some packaging technology to reduce this di distance to uh, 100 of micrometer, even to 100 of nanometer. If the distance is short, uh, uh, the, the data transmission will be uh, significantly uh, reduced. The, whole system will be more efficient. So what is the incessor computing? Incessor computing, we use some multifunctional device. So this device can be sensor, this device can be computing unit. And then we uh, combine them together uh, into a newer network. So when, when the sensor signal comes in, uh, and this newer network can uh, convert the external stimulation into electronic signal, and, uh, process this, this electronic signal with this neural network. So data don't need to do any transfer. So uh, today I'm going to show two examples from our uh, research team. One is a, one is a sensor with a super linear uh, response characteristics. We can use it for the image feature enhancement. Uh, the other type sensor is a, a with the sublinear characteristics, we can use it for a high uh, dynamic range. 
So here we de design a sensor that is the so-called uh, OGRAM. Uh, its device structure is very simple, just like capacitor. Uh, the top electron is I2, uh, intermediate uh, material is uh, MO3, bottom electron is PD. I2 is a transparent, it allows light to go inside. So uh, when the light goes inside, uh, the count will uh, increase. Uh, it uh, works like a memory. So the light intensity will be uh, stored uh, according to the resistance state. So we can switch many, many cycles. Uh, so uh, we fabricated an uh, uh, array uh, inside a poly uh, clean room. So here you can see uh, when we uh, use a pattern. So this pattern is uh, very small uh, because uh, the array is only eight by eight. Uh, if the light intensity is really strong, we, we can capture this image uh, with the uh, uh, better image contrast. But if the light intensity is relatively weak, we, we, can, can, we, we can still capture the image, but the image contrast will be uh, not good. If the light intensity is further reduced, uh, we cannot uh, uh, record the image. So, uh, this device actually uh, exhibits the sublinear uh, response characteristics. So uh, if the light intensity is very high, uh, uh, the information will uh, be stored in the memory and the retention is much better. Uh, but if uh, uh, if its light intensity is weak, uh, it will be automatically uh, uh, relaxed to the original state. So, uh, with this pre-processing image, actually we can connect to a neural network. Uh, because our array is very small, just eight by eight. So uh, we construct uh, a database uh, with some letters. So with this ORAM pre-processing, the image contrast actually is uh, significantly improved. And uh, we, we can recognize more easily. So this is one example with uh, superlinear characteristics. The other example is uh, 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 sublinear characteristics. So uh, as I said earlier, uh, in our nature environment, actually it has a very wide range of intensity, light intensity. So uh, at the noon, the sunlight is very uh, strong, but uh, at the night, uh, the light is very dim. So, uh, for the nature light, its dynamic range actually is very uh, wide. It's around uh, 200 dB. But uh, in our uh, silicon CMOS image sensor, it only has uh, uh, 6 dB or 70 dB. So in your camera, uh, in your smartphone, you, you have a camera. So typically, this dyna dynamic range is only 60 or 70 dB. It's very narrow. Uh, but from the human eye, actually, uh, as I said earlier, it has a dim cell, uh, it has a root cell and a cool cell. Root cell can detect a dim light, cool cell can detect bright light, but they can, their dynamic range is also very small, even smaller than silicon CMOS image sensor, only 40 dB. But our human eye, we have horizontal cell, it can control the ratio between the uh, root cell and cool cell. So after this adaptation process, uh, uh, the dynamic range could be up to 106 dB. So uh, our human eye actually is more efficient than uh, image size. So we try to learn uh, this adaptation process. So actually this phenomenon uh, uh, is a study uh, many, many years ago. So if, if you learn uh, high school physics, you must know this person, uh, Weber. So when you learn the magnetic field, magnetic field, the unit actually is a Weber. So Weber is the first person who identified the relationship between the uh, stimulation and the human perception. Uh, so this is a, a this is a a, 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 a sub branch uh, of physics. This is so-called the psychophysics. So uh, Weber identified the relationship between the uh, stimulation and the perception. So uh, here uh, you can see uh, uh, the position change actually is a proportional to the uh, stim stimulation. Key is just a constant. 
uh, later his student uh, uh, Fichtner further identified uh, this the relationship between the stimulation and the perception in the biological system should be the longer relationship. So inspired by uh, this uh, research work, actually we did, did device simple uh, sensors. So here we use some uh, uh, a very thin uh, semiconductor. This semiconductor, it it's, uh, has an atomic level. So uh, it has a, a, a very unique uh, defect physics that allow us to emulate the uh, human photoreceptor. So we fa fabricated this electronic device. Uh, you can see on a four inch silicon wafer, actually we can fabricate this uh, uh, ultra C semiconductor, that's the uh, atomic level. It has very good uh, uniformity. Uh, here we fabricated 100 sensors. So you can see th this is our electronic chip. Uh, we fabricated this uh, 100 sensor. Uh, and then we can test the, its uh, photosensitivity. Uh, this is a three terminal uh, device structure. Uh, through this gate terminal, actually we can uh, uh, control the photosensitivity. Uh, if we use the positive gate voltage, actually the sensitivity is uh, low. If we use negative gate voltage, the sensitivity is high. So if the positive gate voltage uh, it can emulate the function of the root cell. As the negative get wanted, it can emulate the uh, root cell. Yeah. So, uh, so by controlling the get wanted, then we can switch between the root and the code, and just to emulate the uh, human eye uh, adaptation process. So with this uh, uh, control, actually, we can realize the uh, dynamic range is up to 199 dB. So this is much, much wider than the uh, silicon CMOS image sensors. And also we fit with this uh, threshold value as a function of the light intensity. It fits very, very well with this uh, Weaver's law. Okay, uh, so let me show you an uh, example. So this is our experimental results. You can see uh, uh, at the very beginning, at the very beginning, uh, it's very dark. Uh, when the light condition uh, is very uh, weak, we cannot see anything. But uh, when we apply the get voltage with uh, uh, minus uh, two V, you can see. the image uh, automatically become clear and clear. So that is a adaptation process. Uh, similarly, if the initial condition is very bright, we still cannot see anything. But when we apply a uh, get one to it, that is a, a positive form way, you can see. So the image is also clear and clear. Okay, so uh, just now I show you some uh, nonlinear response. Actually, the linear response is also very useful. So uh, uh, today, every people is talking about uh, artificial intelligence. On the artificial intelligence, uh, we can use a different algorithm. But most of the algorithm, it, it is based on the multiplication and the summation. So our idea is, uh, can we uh, use the sensor to realize this multiplication and the summation? If we can do this multiplication and the summation with the sensor, then we can do most of the uh, 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 machine learning algorithm. But uh, if we are going to do this uh, mathematical operation, they are linear operation. So we, we hope the sensor has a linear response. So in this way, actually, uh, we uh, we can use the uh, sensor uh, process to emulate the uh, multiplication. So for example, R is the responsivity of a sensor, S is the stimulation. So uh, when, the light, when the light green side uh, interacts with the image sensor, it will time and produce the photo count. So this is a multiplication process. 
and then we can connect a lot of sets together. It will uh, uh, do the sum process uh, according to the careful kind of law. So in this design, uh, we can uh, realize both uh, multiplication and the summation. We can realize most of the machine learning algorithms. So here you can see uh, this is uh, one work done by Professor Thompson Muller. Uh, the uh, the design are uh, three by three, uh, a very small image sensor, uh, but uh, uh, they use the uh, uh, principle I mentioned here, uh, and then this can uh, uh, use a different algorithm like the super wise learning and on super learning. Then they can recognize the uh, small letter like a V and N very quickly, just within nanoseconds. From the typical uh, uh, CMOS image sensor, their speed is just a millisecond or microsecond. But with this design uh, in sensor computing, the response speed could be nanosecond, much, much faster. Uh, just now, uh, I show you some uh, example mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, done by done at PolyU, uh, but the size is still uh, very small, just uh, six by eight by eight, uh, ten by ten. But the more recently, actually, we fabricated large scale chip. So here you can see this is a, a optical image uh, that is uh, we fabricated uh, over eight thousand uh, transistor, and we met with uh, over six hundred pixel uh, sensor. With this sensor, actually, we can detect. Uh, the image more efficiently. Okay, uh, my time is up. I think I should stop here and take a few questions. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Oh,那谢谢柴教授的分享。那我们这边有收到观众的提问，就是说，呃，这个仿生视觉传感器是可以放进人体，呃，就人类的体内的吗？ Uh, this is a very good question, a uh, very good question. Uh, but uh, this is another uh, research area. Uh, so if we are going to place this uh, uh, vision sensor inside the uh, human uh, body, we, we have to consider the interface between the electronics and the, the biological system. In this case, the biocompatibility bio is very important. Uh, at the current stage, uh, in our research team, uh, we we still didn't uh, uh, study, but uh, but some colleagues uh, in other countries uh, they use a different approach, uh, try to uh, uh, study the bug compatibility uh, to 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 try uh, the these artificial eyes. Uh, in, in our research team, we are still uh, to replace the image sensor. We are not going to uh, embed uh, in, inside the human body. Did, did I answer your question? I think I have a question. I have a question. Okay, uh, uh, we study uh, bio-inspired vision sensor in, in order to uh, solve the existing uh, problem associated with uh, uh, conventional image sensor. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, conventional image sensor, it has a high power consumption. Uh, so how to reduce the power consumption of the vision sensor is a very important task. If the power consumption is, is uh, very low, uh, the, the, your battery will can work over a long time. Uh, and also, we are trying to make the uh, vision sensor more intelligent. For example, image sensor actually it, it cannot it's not intelligent. It it cannot recognize something. But if we uh, use in sensor computing uh, per diagram. Uh, we can make the sensor more intelligent. So just now I show you an example. Uh, this three by three sensor actually can, re can automatically recognize uh, some uh, letters like V and N. 
So in the future, we are trying to make the vision sensor more and more intelligent. 好，那感谢蔡教授的解答。那我相信大家听完都呃有获益到很多。那这一场的讲座也接近尾声了。那蔡教授呃可以先行离开这个 Zoom 的会议。感谢你的分享。好好嗯。好，那我们这边有一个 QR code 是有关这一次讲座的问卷调查。那大家也可以扫这个二维码，就留下大家的意见。那在 z 填完问卷的观众也可以按右下角的离开按钮离开这个会议，谢谢大家。